Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series. It's custom 5v5, not 4v4, even though that's what I've put in the little scrolling bar down there at the bottom because I am stupid. Uh, but yeah, no, custom 5v5 with mostly pros, one or two Joes thrown in there for good measure, but it's mostly pros today. Uh, before we start, I'd like to apologise for the state of today's thumbnail. Uh, I'm feeling particularly short on um, inspiration. You see, I didn't even have the inspiration to think of the word inspiration there today. That's how much I'm lacking it. Uh, but I just thought, you know what? I've got to get the content out. This, you know, it's the one part of this whole YouTube gig that I really can't stand. It's the thumbnail side of things. At no point in my life had I ever wanted a side gig as a part-time graphic designer, but that's what I've got, and it's infuriating. But I do it out of love for you. That's what it's, and that's so. As a result, you know, it's not going to get extra click view, uh, click through rate views from today's thumbnail. But uh, you guys get your content. That's the most important thing. That's all I care about. Anyway, on to today's game. As we said, it's going to be custom 5v5. And it's going down on a generated map. Exciting stuff. What will it produce for us today, I wonder? I'm ready. You guys are ready. And the players are sure as hell ready. So let's go on over to the game zone and see how they're going to get on. Ching, ka -ching. All right. Pretty uh, saucy looking number that the map gen has produced for us today big old pond right in the center uh, absolutely crucial to get control of that because uh, there's not that much territory towards the edges so a decent missile cruiser or something right on the coastline can reach just about everywhere so control of that's going to be important anyway let's take a look at our teams this will be team one up here on the top left and left side and team two down here bottom right go first for team one not really really good air position but top corner first sort of firstly and i never know how to say this game whether it's regile or is it regisle or regisle that's certainly how snoop dog would say it and as you and i know uh he and i are pretty close so we'll go with that regisle and there he is, he's going lime green, going Seraphim, opening first land. Team member number two down here to his south. It's Rezzy Noob. He's going UEF and Elephantine Grey, opening first land, second air. Team member number three over towards the coast on the pond. It's Boxeroo, our first spiky space socialist of the day, our first Cybran. There he is, opening first land. Team member number four down here in Dijon Yellow. He's selling himself short, saying he's no fun. I don't believe him in the slightest. Here he is, and he's going Seraphim, opening first land, second air. Team member number five, last of all in baby blue for team one. It's Fergus 1080, dude. And he is going Aeon in electric blue, opening first land. Let's check out team two now. Bottom right, first of all, in Spetsnaz Green, another Cybrin. And it is Gingerbread Man going first and second land. Team member number two over here, Otto Noob. Otto Noob, Otto Wash. There he is. He's going Aeon in electric blue. First land, second air. Over towards the coast for team two. It's Matri. Reminds me of me, Madri. Uh, there it is, Matri. And he's going Aeon, opening first land in mellow yellow. Already on the move. For Team 2 in Pontiff White, it's Macro Noob strutting his stuff on the seabed there. And he's gone Aeon as well. First land and last but not least up here at the top for Team 2 in Fecal Brown, it's Electric Foot. He's going Seraphim and he's going land all day, it would seem. Four of those puppies are queued up for good measure. A lot of floaty, floaty, naughty, naughty coming out from Team 2. It's 1, 2, 3 Aeon. Is that right? Three Aeon, a Seraphim, and a Cybrin for Team 2. Team 1, we've got two Seraphim, an Aeon, a UEF, and a Cybrin. Game quality at 93%. We're pretty happy with that. What's the spread in terms of talent? Well, top-rated player today is Rezzy Noob, the Elephant Time Grey chappy over here for Team 1 at 2,000. Uh, next after him, Otto Noob there for Team 2 in the matching corresponding spot over here. He's a 1,900 lowest rated players. Electric Foot, 1,200 up here at the top. And uh, after him, who have we got? Another 1,200 as well. Fergus 1080 down here at the bottom corner. So they really have corresponded all of the places to make it as fair as possible. Should be an interesting one. Harassing Bombers out down here at the bottom. Nice kill there for Auto Noob. Picking off an engineer, a little bit of a hover bomb going on, grabs himself another one and uh, didn't manage to finish that mech's construction either. Just wheeled away to try and dodge the impending bomb and another one. Didn't get a chance to complete that either. 
And a sneaky little uh, run by onto that top plateau. A hunter and a scout job. Look at the harass here from Auto Noob. Absolutely going to town on poor old Fergus. Little 1080 jobby down there at the bottom at a mere 1200. Getting a little bit of smackdown electric foot. Not uh, put to the wall by that little bit of harass. One lone lab funneled into his main base. Deals with that without any major difficulty. Regisal rolls forward with his comm. It's going to throw down a point defense and a whole load of wall sections as well. Going right to the pond in the center. Can electric foot disrupt this construction? He certainly looks like he's thinking about it. Strolling forward with his commander. Blaps the engineer that was coming to build the northern wall sections and then just opens up on the comm, but that will finish the T1 point defense. Electric Foot brings forward his spam, and Regisel is going to back up in the face of that. T1 point defense going to go down. No hold on that position for you just yet. What's happening in the pond? Well, we've got pretty solid forward pressure along the southern section from No Fun. He's rolling in with a frigate and a couple of zooies back here. Matri already working his way back out of the pond onto dry land. Maybe to help with defensive emplacements against impending attack. Auto Noob down here gets a little bit of help with an upgrade there on his gun from Gingerbread Man. And we have actually got some to and fro on the naval side of things over here. One lone attack submarine wailing away on Resi Noob who has traversed the entire pond with his comm. And is just very nonchalantly going to stand on the opposing shore and start harassing Macro Noob's infrastructure. A couple of engineers over here, though, hastily get a T1 point defense together, so Rezzy's got to be a little bit careful. He's going to focus in on that T1 torpedo launcher, trying to give his vessels an easier ride. And this is a very solid naval start here from Team 1. They can shut Macro Noob out here. That's one of the shoreline parties more or less defeated, and I hate to say it, it's very early doors, but it looks like they've got control of the pond for the time being, and that's just over the six-minute mark. How crucial that proved to be over the course of this game, I wonder. Engineers out from Resi Noob, hovering over the water, and they're going to be dropped down there to work on construction of a naval yard. Now they know they've got control. They can go to town, get up to Tech 2 and start funneling cruisers out to dominate the bases on the opposing shoreline. But look at this double com pressure down in the bottom left hand corner. Gingerbread Man and Auto Noob against poor old Fergus. 1200 rated player. I am expensive. Love the naming of that early T1 anti-air turret. Doesn't last long for something expensive. And now, this little forward group of factories under threat. Auto Noob switches up, goes straight after the hydrocarbon. What's that gonna do to Fergus's power generation? Well, he's just about in the positive, not leeching off his teammates as yet. But look at all the T1 spam rolling in over here. Let's move up top now and check in on what's going down up there. Electric Foot also facing off against two opponents. Regisel's taken a little bit of a battering. He's into the yellow there on 8,100 HP. Can we see what that upgrade was? He's starting T2. That'll allow him to lock this area down and also give him a boost to his hit points as well once that's completed. And Resi Noob has relocated, having assisted with a takedown of naval facilities down here belonging to Macro Noob. And he's pushed northwards to harass the main base, or at least lay some pressure down against Electric Foot. And that will give Regisel all the room he needs to set up a decent firebase. Let's check in back down on the bottom left-hand corner, because Fergus is having a really torrid time facing off against all of this T1 spam from Gingerbread Man and of course the two comms down here from Team 2 
T2 upgrade, 35% done there for Auto Noob. Once he's completed there, they can start setting up shop, and that's essentially Fergus homeless now. Getting a gun upgrade, will that help him oust these two commanders? He's going to need some assistance from his teammates, I fear. A valiant effort from Team 2 to get re-established on the naval side of things. I really do think this is essential for a map such as this. It seems they agree. You can't just give your opponent free reign on a pond that's so large and so expansive. An attempt as well by Gingerbread Man to get set up. Four naval yards queued up down there in the southern portion of the pond. Still, Resi Noob racking up the kills over here. He's up to 35 now. Taking a bit of a battering on about 55-60% HP. Corresponds to about 8,100 hit points. But still, the kills keep on coming. He's a two-star commander now. And it's all sapping resources out of Electric Foot. And meanwhile... Regisal happy to continue to set up shop over here. We've got a couple of T2 point defense, a T1. Here comes the power generator. It's ready to fuel shield generators, I'm sure, up here. This will be a real impenetrable wall for Electric Foot. And then all they have to do is start throwing down some artillery emplacements. And that's Electric Foot in a similar predicament to Fergus 1080 down here who has completed one upgrade on his comm, one gun, and is now working on the second to get that all-important Aeon Sniper comm going. But Auto Noob has completed not only a gun upgrade, but also the T2 Engineering Suite. He's trying to get a point defense down in the remnant of Fergus's old base to help him, help him lock that down. No fun, though. Very nearby with his commander. He's got a gun upgrade. Auto Noob distracted from his construction momentarily to try and blap some of these units incurs the wrath of no fun and then everybody backs off and auto noob goes back to his point defense construction checking back in on what's happening in the pond and resi noobs had enough of all that harass over by electric foot he's pulled his comm back over to that western side of the pond oh tack missiles being used to great effect there against Macro Noob. Where's that coming from? Is that coming from Regisal? There it is. Picks himself up an air factory kill. The obligatory volcanoes, tactical missile defense going up to defend against future attacks. Sensible decision. And look at this, I am impressed. Matri managed to get a T2 naval factory up and running and already has a couple of Vespers online. This is a, a failure in my mind from Team 1. They had the control of the center and they didn't keep it up. They didn't try and funnel resources into naval play early enough to hold on to that control. But uh, it is still in their favor as long as they shut down Matri early enough and of course gingerbread man down here who's yet to embark on t2 naval tech we have a three-man presence from team one in the water two of which are up to tech two and this is exactly what i was worried about for team two the president the presence of governors and now they're going to find themselves locked into tactical missile defense production, trying to keep their base intact. Oh, is he going to lose that T2P gen? That's not being built very quickly. Yes, he is. Ow. Nice quick reclaim there. Prevents it from damaging the other buildings when it capitulates. Oh, no. Destroyer rolls up as well. Ouch. And now it's the engineers that are feeling the pain. 
And that's exactly what he doesn't need. He hasn't even got that tactical missile defense up and running yet. Things not looking great for Macro Noob. Massive amounts of floaty, floaty, naughty, naughty coming out from Electric Foot in the top right-hand corner to try and counter some of this spam. That at least has those governors on the move. But it feels like it's going to be a temporary measure at best. We do have a little bit of a counter-offensive from Matri, who's got all of those Vespa submarines over here definitely would like to be able to take down these two T2 HQs over here but uh, so many engineers in play able to tank and able to spam out Tech 1 mobile missile launchers even with the assistance from Gingerbread Man and these frigates they're finding it hard to finish this little production hub off Oh, that's a bad place to park your frigate, sir. No fun. Proving he is just that. Turning up to spoil gingerbread man's fun. Oh, a torpedo upgrade for Boxeroo. And uh, for the uninitiated out there for those who are new that's a much more significant amount of damage than you'll get out of these little ones here the commander torpedo launcher is pretty devastating that could be important in the fight for this central pond which still surprises me that we're having actually but uh, we might not be for much longer that all important naval headquarters for Matri now receiving missile bombardment and although they've got all of this build capacity around it unable to keep up with the damage oh, I say that they've been shooed away just in the nick of time what do we get down to there it must have been down to a few hundred hit points at most but the Vespers from Matri pushed out into the center and shooed the cruisers away very nicely done indeed. It's going to allow them to hang on for just a little bit longer. What's happening over here? Another push in the south. Fergus, who's taken a bit of a pummeling, despite having double gun on board that comm. Down to 5,500 hit points. Can't seem to get anything set up. And even if he did, he's got no eco to produce anything out of it now. This whole area completely capitulated to Team 2. I'm wondering if uh, Regisel is uh, playing it a bit too soft against Electric Foot. This is more than secure down here now. He needs to be figuring out some kind of harass. We already have some artillery moving in the other direction it would seem. Needs to be hitting back at that. Macro Noob, though, in a real spot of bother. Ah, oh, so many civilian casualties. This is not good. Not good in the slightest. And now, no funds base potentially in danger against Gingerbread, Gingerbread Man and Auto Noob who really are just on the warpath here. Lots of mobile shield coverage thanks to Auto Noob's unit comp helping to protect those commanders. No fun and Fergus forced to withdraw deeper into their own territory. And now mobile missile launchers threatening this base engineers hurriedly trying to get some shields sorted oh but what's happened down here well we've been looking up at the other side of the screen Matri's lost his naval yard gingerbread man is in the process of losing his governors launching against Matri 
never the easiest thing to target a comm with those cruisers. And so rightly so, he switches up and goes for more static targets. And this is not good. This is great for Team 2. This is not good for Team 2. They are now, I'm confident, saying out of the naval game altogether. It's going to be really hard to get back on that side of things unless they manage to switch up to air and become really, really dominant and fight back against it that way. was that about? Oh, what's going on over here? Macro Noob, having lost most of his base, has gone on the major offensive and airdropped his comm up to the top left-hand corner. We do have the odd counter attempt from T1 bombers bombing the comm, trying to go after this flak battery that he's produced, but he's dropped. He's got a whole bunch of T1 PD. He's got some T2 point defense. What a wonderful little drop towards the top left-hand corner. We've also got a strap bomber assisting him there from Gingerbread Man. Piling on the pressure against all of these mass extractors. Oh, but he's taking a bit of a battering deep into the red. 2,200 hit points. Needs some shield coverage urgently. In come the Zooies from the south. He's successfully mashed the central structures in Regisel's base, but can he hold on? He's very badly damaged. Gets himself another Tech 2 point defense. How far away is he from veterancy? He's a long way, and he's been chased in towards the top corner with no backup. He needs to get as much point defense online as possible. The T1s are great, but they're not going to last long against the artillery, which of course moves straight up to engage them. Needs to try and get a rank in vet. Macro noob. 800, 700, 500, 400. Bosh! Down he goes. The first exit from the game at 21 minutes. And suddenly, Team 2 find themselves down a player, but at the very least, he is massively laid into Regisel. And it's brought him down to 37 mass per tick. Resi Noob on a woeful 7 mass per tick. And he's Team 1's top rated player. Auto Noob valiantly holding the line against mass T1 spam. No fun with this line of factories right on the coast here. Spamming out Zooies towards him. And now he's got two comms coming his way as well. Where's Gingerbread Man in all of this? He was on this side. Well, he's way back here. Engineers working on a whole line of T1 land factories. Point defense being thrown down to give himself a little bit of coverage, but he's got so much inbound fire coming his way. Hit points are just shedding off him. This is the Atkins of hit point diets right now. Auto noob down and out. 22 minutes and 50 seconds. Team two lose another player. Barely two minutes later. And that could be crucial. Remember, Team 2 have already lost the pond. 
And that was already a massive win, but they had such success on the ground back here. Look what's happened to the main bases. Look at the state of Resinu, their 2,000 rated player, pulling in just seven mass per tick. No funds pulling in one mass. Fergus is pulling in one mass. No fun has just jumped back up to 26. But will it be enough? All of these units here in the pond causing so many problems, so many issues. You can see all of the broken mexes already. And there's just not really any response they can do to that. You can see the torpedo bombers out from Gingerbread Man. Trying to counter. You can see the response from Gingerbread Man. He's well aware of the danger now. Auto Noob not quite so much. They have two bases left. Yeah, but they've got the pond, my friend. Over here, this front that hasn't moved at all after that initial engagement. Electric Foot trying to soften up this base with some mobile missile launcher fire. Not really getting anywhere. Double shield coverage up here. Very unfortunate uh, place though to line your... Uh, your base right at the foot of a hill like that. None of that point defense fire getting through towards these units. And Gingerbread Man just going all out to try and combat this naval spam. Takes a lot of torpedo bombers and it doesn't help that they haven't got air control He's got a few ASFs kicking around, but lots of interceptors running escort detail for this naval flotilla. A oh, little bit of uh, naughty, naughty, walkie, walkie going on. Cybrin destroyers forgetting themselves and going for a stroll. Terrible behavior, really. And that does represent a problem. They still retain that massive range, of course. Matri, the focus of some of that inbound fire, isn't going to be able to stick around to finish that, I don't think, unless he minds losing most of his HP in the process. Indeed, there he goes. Fergus feeling emboldened by the demise of Auto Noob, pushing back a little bit against Gingerbread Man. Where's Gingerbread Man's comm? Is he airlifted back to base? Ah, oh, there he is, right in the bottom left-hand corner. He's got the uh, stealth upgrade on board, so should help keep him a little bit safe. Bunch of gunships down here loitering nearby. He's actually also got torpedoes on there. I was wondering if he was planning to use that to try and reclaim some of the naval territory. But this isn't good at all for Team 2. Destroyers. Pummeling away at Gingerbread Man's base, but he's completed an experimental... And where is that going? Waypoint tells us it's going on the offensive. This is where he's heading. And it looks like he'll be funneling up that left-hand side for another attack with it. Question is, have Team 1 spotted it? Slowly, bit by bit, these bases are just going to get chewed up. Nothing they can do against these long-ranged vessels. That's the range of the governor there. Of course, you could bring it right down here and hit most of the main base as well, I'm sure. And then, of course, you've got these uh, destroyers over here with pretty solid ranges of their own. 
really is amazing functionality that for the Salem. And up over here. Well, we've lost a shield gen. So something did happen momentarily. But otherwise this just hasn't moved really. Jissel's moved his comm away from that front line into the water down here. That's actually got T3 and Nano upgrade on there as well. This could be the last we see of Fergus if he's intent on loitering down here and he's not paying attention with a Monkey Lord coming his way. Monkey Lord, of course, equipped with stealth. If they're paying attention, they would have seen that and they could recognize the threat. But of course, even with intel coverage from those vessels, they need Omni to be able to properly and effectively track it. Certainly help them if they can continue to disrupt his power grid, though. You saw it pop up as a radar signature then momentarily. That's because Gingerbread Man's power grid has just taken a battering. Engineers over here hurriedly trying to get more ion reactors online. And I think uh, he's rescued it for now. That's a pretty solid net influx of power. Macro noob pinging down here, making sure everybody's well aware of Boxeroo's beachhead which is under construction over here Fergus dipping into the water in the face of all of that T1 spam which is just getting showered by Cybran naval artillery fire just look at it Now, where's that Monkey Lord? It's gone right to the edge of the screen. He wants to give it as much of a chance as it can away from all of this cruiser fire. More engineers being airdropped over to this side of the map from Boxeroo, who will now, I presumably, work on cornering Gingerbread Man and Matry down here at the bottom right. And those governors that have been softening up this area down here, most of them have moved forward ever so slightly towards Electric Foot. And now Monkey Lord strutting his stuff. Tearing his way through the fringes of No Fun's base. Could this be the moment where he gets his own back and evens up the game slightly? It's certainly going to inflict an awful lot of damage. He's getting into it as well with his renegade gunships. He's got an escort detail of air superiority fighters that should be able to keep them safe. Monkey Lord pushing further north. And then wheeling right. Not going to worry about those sections for the time being. I think this is the right call down here if he can take out as much of this infrastructure. And then, of course, Boxeroo up here, who's already in the process of airlifting Bill Capastio to the other side of the screen. If he can shut down his eco, he might be in with a chance here. Is this the comeback you've been waiting for? As if you don't get one almost every week. <laughs> Down goes the power grid of Boxeroo. Oh, that one's going to hurt. Engineers up here throwing down Cerberus turrets like it's going out of fashion. Monkey Lord on about 30,000 hit points still. Needs time to train that huge laser, though, on the emplacements up here. Oh, don't worry about the Monkey Lord. That's not important right now. 
Down it goes anyway. Absolutely squashed. It's the end of that firebase. We do still have a whole horde of Salem's trailing this monkey lord. And all of that seems to have bought them a little bit of time down in the bottom right hand corner. Gingerbread man fighting with loyalists. And Harbinger's out for Matry looking to reclaim this coastline from these engineers. If they get uh, close enough to the cruisers, they might be able to take a couple of those down as well. That monkey lord though still going. 230 kills. Now stomping in towards that border section where so little has happened. Advanced nano repair upgrade paused for Regisal. Both Boxeroo and his teammates. Com. In fact, three comms sitting in this little bay area over here. Attack missiles still flying from east to west. Or west to east, even. <laughs> I only got it exactly wrong. Point defences have turned around to engage the Monkey Lord, which is now up to 269 kills. Definitely wants to stroll out a range of that, or conversely head straight into it and take him down. But look at this, Fergus, having pushed out now, has made his way down here. A little bit further down, looking to try and secure some more territory, perhaps so he can get set up once again and get back into the game. Team 2 actually up on overall eco, but that might be deceptive, of course. They've lost teammates, so mass from their bases, of course, as we always say, has been recycled. Where are we in generated eco? Well, Team 2 are up there, too. It's 315 versus 272 at the time of mentioning it. Electric foot now, though, feeling the full force of that UEF cruise missile artillery. Monkey Lord still going up over here. Fully five-starred, vetted, 327 kills, and actually looking healthier from its regen than it did a while ago. Back up to 30,000 hit points. But look at all of the spam. No fun, just refuses to quit. So many T1 land factories going up. So much more spam ready to tie up incoming units. We've got these roving band of uh, Bernie's out from Gingerbread Man. I like that. One large experimental to draw all of the inbound pressure and then get fast T3 bots to tidy up all the gubbins behind. Another experimental. Is that another Monkey Lord? Yes, it is. And we have a Tsar under construction from Matry. I say under construction from Matry, he will have started it, presumably. But it seems to be mostly being built now by Gingerbread Man. But this is starting to look bad up at the top of the screen for Electric Foot, who has completed an experimental, but whose shields in the main base are beginning to buckle under the pressure of inbound fire. got lots and lots of tactical missile defense a decent amount of shielding but it only feels like a matter of time before that base succumbs to the pressure 
Monkey Lord over here, still going 401 kills, but badly damaged now, down to 6,100 hit points. main threat coming from the sea this will feel good for electric foot finally steamrollering over what's left of that border force with that experimental are there any comms nearby that he could take out with that really needs to be sending it down here to reinforce the monkey lord's position and putting some damage on these naval yards maybe even getting down here because we've got battleships being produced now from Resi Noob, which is not ideal, but you know what else isn't ideal for Team 2? The Salems have joined the party from the land side. And the last shield is finally drained and collapses and that's not going to go well at all when that goes up ouch electric foot abandoning his base with his common pushing northwards he does move down to this position with his ethota has that monkey lord finally died yes it has that mighty experimental that inflicted so much damage has finally gone down Have a little bit of air pressure in over the top from Gingerbread Man, who's been playing out of his skin to keep Team 2 in the game. And they are actually up massively on mass production. It's actually, they're out producing them 2 to 1 at the moment. Are they actually going to do this, this comeback? Is the comeback real? They are in the lead at the moment. Ithota could do with keeping on the move though. Ah, didn't get microed at the end there. Presented an easy target for those sirens just to finish it off. If it had moved a little bit closer, would have at least got the ion storm in around these sensitive structures. Because that really is a target of opportunity right there. But Electric Foot just in pieces and Regisel very rudely and presumptuously setting up shop along with Resi Noob in Electric Foot's old base. Handful of T2 units remain up here, some mobile missile launchers, a couple of Ilshivas. But that is it. Monkey Lord going toe-to-toe -to -toe with all of the spam over here from no fun that czar half done now trouble is we still are back in this position once again with the fact that they lost the pond governors spamming cruise missiles in and even with all of this tactical missile defense there are so many inbound missiles they just can't contend with them all slowly one by one those structures get taken down gingerbread man entirely consumed with micro at the moment on this monkey lord trying to keep it alive and away from all of this inbound fire from this battleship over here which collides with another shot has to be said this is great work though from team one the amount of ground-based pressure that they've received and now aerial pressure as well as the gunships are brought into play electric foot on the move as well to attack from the north having lost his main base just moving everything he's got back in it's a proper base trade situation going on with team one setting up shop in the top right hand corner lots and lots of land factories of the order of the day he will be funneling huge quantities of spam southwards another monkey lord over here though from gingerbread man who single-handedly is keeping them going in this fight with the monkey lords 
Oh, but that's a lot of flak. That's a lot of flak, and it's very, very bad for your T2 gunships. <laughs> oh, no. Renegades falling out of the sky. Like rain. Wow, that last half of the uh, HB finished very quickly. Now, is he going to be able to tidy up? That's a lot of anti-air firepower, though, off those cruisers. He's going to want to tidy that up to give themselves some breathing room down here. But at the same time, just look at the rate of reduction. That is the right decision. Get on out of there. You are not going to survive that. Goes in with the expendable torpedo bombers instead. Have we lost that next monkey lord? Yes, we have. Another spidery carcass. Lying in rest over here. Electric foot on the ground, continues to push with what's left of his army, his comm pretty isolated up here, but he has got some engineers and they're working on producing factories as quickly as they can. Tsar sent to the top right hand corner where there's significantly less in the way of anti-air capabilities. Summit inbound hasn't probably got time to go and take care of those as the cruisers are moving up as well. He might not have noticed that though. And in fact, they're not moving in a direct enough route. No, he has seen it. He thought about it for a moment and then changed his mind. Where is Regissel's com? Well, he's moved south in amongst all of that to join Fergus once again on this little headland as they try and set up shop. This game is insane. I literally have no idea who's going to come out on top. In fact, Team 1 have gone ahead on Generated Eco now. That's mental. Just shows you the power of the naval play on the right kind of map. Monkey Lord taking huge amounts of damage from those battleships. Wants to mix it up with some micro if you can afford the APM. Can't seem to get in range with that laser. There it goes. Cruiser down. Tsar moving across the top of the screen. No fun starting a RAS upgrade on his comm. But this is not good. They've got no way to hit back against this. They are running out of production capability. The longer this goes on, the smaller the area of territory they've got to work from. That Tsar, very badly damaged, has got about a third of its base health left. Has got the shield, of course, but... Monkey Lord still alive over here. Urgently needs a rank in veterancy. 162 kills, but about 1,400 hit points left. Doesn't get it as a nice shot comes in from that summit over there just to finish it off. How crucial will that be, I wonder? They really need to take out these T3 naval yards. And he is moving in that direction, but he's lost his shield already. There's so much anti-air capability. Is he even going to be able to get that? No, he's not. Will the... Falling Donut score the kill. No, it takes it down to half. It does kill off a lesser T1 naval yard underneath it. But what's left for them now that they've lost both the Tsar and the Monkey Lord? I think Team 1 might just have done it. It's a comeback from a comeback. Absolutely unreal. What amazing play from both teams, but 
just shows you how important the water is. Never, ever underestimate it. Team 2 never got proper control back once they lost it. And it's probably cost them the game. 48 minutes down. One wonders how much longer these two will hang on. Electric Foot all by his lonesome up in the top left-hand corner. Has a lot of land factories up. That's true, but shortly everything will be converging on him, I'm sure. And then it will just be Matry and Gingerbread Man cornered in their bases down here at the bottom right-hand corner. Another Monkey Lord is completed. So many tactical missile defences trying to keep these missiles out. The range on that battleship. The battleship can reach most of those, especially if they were to part slightly and let him in. He could take all of those down. Fergus has had enough of this. He's moving up north to deal with this personally. Electric Foot throwing down some T1 PD, but that's getting bombed by T1 bombers. Fergus double gun com. Electric Foot just with that T2 engineering suite. I don't think he's going to survive this one. That's a lot of damage that Fergus is putting out. Down go the factories as the rhinos roll in. Electric Foot now the beneficiary of all of the discharges from Fergus's cannon. No double entendre intended. 7,700 hit points and falling. This really will be the signifier of Team 2's demise if it wasn't already clear. And now everything will be directed at the bottom right hand corner. And amazingly, after this whole game, Team 1 yet to lose a man. They've kept all of their players in the game. You can see Matry overflowing mass, can't spend it, hasn't got the build capacity to do so. You've got one Monkey Lord out front trying to resist the impending onslaught. But look at everything pouring down to the bottom right hand corner. T1 bombers moving in to harass unshielded PGENs. It's a lot of spy planes that Gingerbread Man has amassed at the bottom left hand corner. What else is there that can be done at this point? Gingerbread Man on an upgrade. I didn't see what. Oh, it's the microwave laser. The obligatory cyber and tele snipe. The calling card of the bad loser. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> he knows I'm only joking. Just wow, though. What an insane game. Haven't seen one like this for a while. So tough to call. We're getting some GG's out already. Teleporter under construction, but you know what? I don't think he's got the eco to pull that off. Look at the power consumption. He's 17% done. And a net 21,000 negative energy. And that situation's only going to get worse as time moves on. Matry on an upgrade as well. What's he working on? Starting T3. Guessing to be able to pump out more point defense quicker. But really, at this point, you are merely delaying the inevitable, I feel. 
Look at the sheer amount of spam heading their way. Summit artillery colliding with all of the tactical missile defense and taking all of that out. This is now looking very open indeed for the governors once again if they redirect their fire down here. Well, he's up to 55% done on the teleporter. Then, of course, he still has to actually teleport, which takes a decent amount of power consumption too, I believe. <laughs> Your tenacity is admirable, but the outcome of this battle was determined long ago. Ah, that's a pretty apt inbuilt taunt right there for the current situation. Teleporter cancelled. He knows he's not going to be able to finish that. He's going to valiantly try and defend what's left of the base with his comm and that whopping chest laser as the spam rolls in and goes straight after the power grid that's going to be pretty Woo. golly And there's a control K if ever I saw one from Gingerbread Man. Very well played indeed. Matry strolling out to defend. Or thinking about it at least. <laughs> Still trying to get defenses in place. Trying to make them earn it. It's got this wonderful group of harbingers up here that have been valiantly defending against this northern pressure. T1 bombers over the top. P gens, P storage, all gonna go down. Matry for a moment absorbs some unnecessary artillery fire and then gets on the move once more. Regissal over here with his com, spamming up some T2 point defense. Just look at the mini-map, though. Look at all of the gubbins coming this way. Unstoppable torrent. And what could be a better way to finish it than some com-on-com -com action. Regissal throwing down point defense. It probably gets battered by both Matry and his Cerberus turrets. He builds another one. And it is now a point defense penis measuring contest. <laughs> Who can get them up the quicker? And it's going to be Brigisol, unsurprisingly. Boom, baby! 56 minutes almost on the nose, and that brings the game to a close. Five players still in play for Team 1. A complete clean sheet from what was a very very close game in the grand scheme of things that result does not tell you the story of the game in the slightest that was an absolute gutter war but what did them as it has so often not getting control of the water or really being able to make a play for it for most of the game but i hope you enjoyed it nonetheless guys don't forget if you feel so inclined and you've seen everything on the main youtube channel you can check out the patreon it's a mere dollar a month we just had a new one go up yesterday that means 34 unique premium uh, premium casts available for your viewing for a mere dollar why not go and check it out guys but until next time stay well and stay safe this is guile signing out